Hey everybody, it's me, the 16-bit professor, aka Professor Hearthstone, and uh, this is episode 2 of the 16-bit Pathfinder tutorial. Um, in this episode, we're going to be looking at making character sprites and turning those sprites into uh, usable tokens that your characters can play with and control in your Roll20 campaigns. Now, there are a lot of really good uh, sites for different templates and different styles. Um, I have always really liked um, the RPG Maker uh, sprite style uh, ever since I was a kid tinkering around with that program. So we're going to go ahead and use a, a template from that program. And uh, we're going to be making a high priest here. And um, just so you guys know, I'll have some uh, other templates in the, the info below that you can use. But we'll have the template site here. We're going to make it, and then we're going to uh, do some editing in Pixlr to get each frame the way we want it. We're going to upload it into our library, and then we're going to go ahead and drop it into the game. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is um, select a body type. You can see that each different tab kind of does a different thing. And, um, you know, there's different faces and, and uh, facial hair and items and armors and clothings and helmets and all these different things. And you just kind of click what you want, and it all adds it together and uh, to make a, a nifty sort of character. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the bearded face since that's what we want. And um, yeah, I mean, just so you know, I mean, this is, this is probably the most time consuming process of the 16-bit uh, because they, the tokens are Making the tokens themselves in the Roll20 uh, application takes a little time. Uh, but all in all, it's a pretty easy process, and once you do it uh, for a character, you don't have to do it for them again. And so, um, while sometimes this sprite creation through the template can take some time, it's also kind of fun. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you're trying out different things and getting different combinations. Some of them are just goofy and ridiculous, and some of them are, are pretty neat. Uh, like I mentioned before, there are a lot of really great um, other templates you can use if if this style of sprite isn't really your cup of tea. Uh, but I've, I've always been enchanted with RPG Maker ever since I was a kid, like I said, so... I uh, like it quite a lot. Um, we're going to look for some armor, we want some big regal looking thing for him. And, uh, yeah, just want him to look uh, majestic, you know. So, uh, we want the cape and all that. So, I've... I've been doing this a while, and, um... One thing I would say, uh, as a bit of advice is... Uh... There's, a, there's like, a few template things that you're gonna be tempted to just use all the time, because, like, clothing sets, they're really cool. Um... I like to save those for making my PCs sprites, uh, so they can feel pretty cool. I don't know, just a little tip. So we're going to save him as High Priest. I think we've got what we want. And alright, we're going to go over to Pixlr. And what we're going to do in Pixlr is we're going to go ahead and open that back up. Um, by default, there's no transparency. We want transparency, uh, so we can just drop him right into the world. Uh, easiest way to do it to get transparency into this file is to just double click the little lock over there in the layers tab and um, double clicking that little lock is going to uh, unlock the ability to edit that layer and so we're going to use the wand tool we're going to click the green and then we're going to delete it just pressing delete and that's going to make <coughs> everything else transparent now what you're going to want to do and this is really important um, and I'll explain why later. Uh, you want to just take the middle column and we want to select it. And we, we want to be as tight as we can and I want to copy that. And we're going to go new image, create image from clipboard and transparent. It doesn't matter what you name this one because you're not going to save it. This is just like a working copy to help you get what you want. And then we're going to literally take each, um, we're going to take each frame and we're going to copy and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create from clipboard and transparent. Now, the reason why we took that middle column out is that we want to ensure that these sprites are the same width side to side. Um, top to bottom, they're already going to be. 
Um, but we want them to be the same side to side. So as you can see, um, uh, as I copy these, uh, when I go to new image, it's really convenient. I can literally just uh, name them what I want, and then they're literally just ready to save uh, the second they're made. So I can just save those. Um, make sure you pick PNG there. You don't pick JPEG because JPEGs don't support transparency. And when you put it in your game, you'll end up with a big white rectangle. Um, now the reason, uh, again, that we want them to be the same width is that um, when you put these in Roll20 and you make it um, so that all four of the frames are part of a rollable table, which means that your character can, your player can uh, reface his character as he wants, um, it's going to have the same dimensions for all four frames. And so if, like, you see just looking at the column that the, the ones facing to the side um, are narrower than the ones facing forward and back. And we, we want, um, if we didn't have that extra space and make sure that they have the same dimensions, it would stretch those sides out and you'd end up with really, a really wonky looking character when they, when they turn it. Um, so now that we've saved all four of them as separate images, um, what we're going to do is upload them into our library. And uh, I, I find that it's a little bit easier uh, because Roll20 doesn't offer the ability to upload, like to, to click the upload button and then select multiple items. So just a little tip, uh, it's easier if you get all the items you want and you, you drag them from the folder uh, right into that and you can upload uh, mass stuff that way. Because if you do choose a file, yeah, it won't let you do that. Uh, so you'll see those pop up. And as soon as those are popped up, um, then you know that you can put it right into Roll20. Now the first thing you do is head over to this, uh, the decks and tables, and you're gonna add a rollable table. What this is gonna do is it's going to attach all four frames to the same like object. And so um, go tab over to the picture spot, keeping your little new table open. And then you're literally going to add items. And you don't need to name these, it doesn't matter. Um, and you want to add all four of them uh, into that table. And I suggest doing this in a map that you have other NPCs already placed and stuff so you can, so you can get the right uh, dimensions that you want. Because when you click that token button right there, it's going to make him, and it's going to make him a square, so it's going to be really wonky looking. Um, and we kind of want to just... Uh, you know, stretch them out to be roughly the size we want, um, and uh, you can see right there it looks pretty good. He's you know about about the right size, I think. And um, and all the modifications that you want for this character need to be made before um, you actually attach it to the character itself. So let me show you. So we want a nameplate because he's a major NPC. So we want the nameplate there. Okay, and we want um, him to be attached to a certain character, and the way that we do that is um, we can go into our journal entry area and we can add um, a little readout for him. So, hi, Priest Dorand. And we want to um, use his portrait so the characters can see what he looks like. Uh, so they get an idea of who they're talking to. And what we want to do is click his token, and then we're going to press use selected token. Now, that means that any th any changes you make to the token now are not going to be by default. So if you want to make changes to the default token, you need to remove it and then re-add it. Um, but now we can place him uh, just however we want. You know, you can sit there and go to any other map, and you can just drag it straight from the journal screen onto the map, and um, able to choose the sides that he's facing. Uh, now, player characters that are in control of their own character can also reface, so that's really convenient for them. And um, like I said, yeah, you, you one of the things that you want to make sure and do is to grab that center column out of um, the image that's first generated, uh, because it's going to stretch the dimensions all around this character to match the widest and tallest one. Yeah, you know, whatever you set the dimensions to when you're stretching it out, you know, it'll look something like this or something if you if you don't make sure that you 
they all have roughly the same dimensions, so that's that's really important. Um, and anyways, yeah, I mean, you can, you know, makes uh, the game a lot easier. You can drag guys around and, you know, uh, do your campaign uh, in, the, in this way is really convenient. And it's uh, it's neat because, oh, well, we don't want that. Uh, but it's really it's really neat uh, you know it makes it makes placing maps and and adding enemies and and uh, you know improvising and, and uh, DMing on the fly which is really important for a good DM makes it a lot easier just to be able to drag a character from from the uh, the journal so uh, that's pretty much it and I uh, hope you enjoy uh, we'll be coming out with some other episodes here and um, Yep, I, I hope you get a lot out of it, and I'd love to see some other 16-bit games going. Thanks.